Hey there, it's Roland from Getting It Done North of Seven. Today I'm going to be stacking some firewood and I'm going to show you how I stop firewood from falling. Alright, as you can see I have a row of wood here that is missing. That's because I'm moving these three rows into the firewood shed. Because this wood here is not for this winter, it's for next winter. So what happened here is this row about halfway up the row, and it's a full bush cord, it had collapsed over into that row of firewood. Now there's several reasons that might happen. You may put some, your firewood stack on top of a platform of some kind, maybe skids, or like I did, some trees, just small diameter trees. They're different sizes. But I kind of compensated for that when I was stacking it. But what I think what happened was the shift in the ground at winter time, the frost comes up, the frost goes down in the spring, and stuff like that. One other time I piled wood and the whole pile fell over. The whole bush cord was because when I got my wood and we were cutting it and splitting it, and then we, when we went to pile it, it was snowing like crazy. And we got quite a bit of snow. And then in the spring or close to spring when the snow started to melt, the pile would shift and fall over and that's going to happen. So that's why I moved to the firewood shelter. We built a firewood shelter this spring and we use skids as a platform to pile our wood on top of. We have a roof so that's really going to eliminate a lot of this issues. But I'm going to show you another reason that could cause your firewood to fall over and how to fix it too. So we cut a tree that had a lot of twists and knots and turns in it like crazy like this and we had a lot of pieces of wood like this that's hard to stack so you had pieces like this you may have pieces like this you know there's big knots in the firewood so you're gonna have when you go to split it you're gonna get pieces like this best thing to do is and I learned the hard way is save this for the top of the piles So what you want to do is when you split your wood, you want to keep all your good pieces that are pretty uniform in size, same all around, keep them for piling your wood to create a good foundation, a good solid foundation. And then you put pieces like this or like this on the tops. That will keep your firewood foundation solid and uniform all the way through and you just put those lousy ones on top. And that'll go a long way to stop firewood from falling. So now I'm going to head over to the wood shelter and I'm going to show you how I stack that wood there. And I'll show you the few tips to keep your firewood from falling down. Alright, if you don't have any way of supporting your firewood, meaning uh, a board at the end of your firewood pile, or a steel post, like a T-post or something like that, to support it from the ends from going like this, like here, I couldn't get my skid close enough to this wall here to stop it from the firewood from going that way. So what I had to do is build an end piece like this. You just take pieces like this. All, all the firewood that you have split, cut the pieces that are shaped like that, and put them on the ends and crisscross them like this. Make sure they're good and sturdy. Use the same sizes. Because like you see this one here is lower, so when I do get some pieces that are a little higher, I'll, I'll exchange this piece here. I just put it there for now, but it'll be level then, right? And you just build it and build it. It'll stop your firewood pile from going this way. And I'll take you down and show you what I did at this end. Alright, at this end here, so my skids came right to the middle, and then I have these beams going across here of my wood shelter. So I just grabbed some other boards and screwed them up here, screwed them to the bottom of the skids, the pallets, and that stops my firewood from falling this way. And I'm going to do the thing on this, same thing on this side. I'll put these boards here on this part here, and I'll stop the firewood from falling this way. It's like bookends. You, want, you got to keep the firewood stable on the ends. If you don't stack your firewood like this, I'll show you another way if, in case you're stacking your firewood outside. Now I built these here for end pieces you know, like bookends at the end of my rows of firewood. And that helped quite a bit.
here's two more that you can see that I use. Now that skid and that log there just sitting there, they're not holding up the wood. Also by putting logs lengthways to pile your firewood on, it helps keeps, your, keeps the bottom of your firewood dry. Because what happens if you have it too close to the ground, the firewood will freeze to the ground and that firewood will absorb moisture from the ground and it'll never truly dry because you want your firewood really dry you know firewood should be seasoned at least two years you can get away with one year but really two years is best that's why all this wood here it's been seasoned one year and it's going into my firewood shelter for another year now along your bottom here you always want to have good solid pieces that aren't rocking you want to keep it solid and tight so we'll get that one in here see like this one here could fit here like this but see how this side goes up a little bit? You're never going to have perfect wood, right? So I'll put it here. So then that'll allow the weight to shift inwards towards this pile. So if it ever decides to lean and fall, it'll go against this pile, which is great. So grab another piece here. We'll put the flat pieces against each other like this. I don't know if you can tell. I'm leaving a bit of space here like this between this pile and this pile. That's because when I get to the top, I'm going to have my wood sit like, say this is the top, up the top, I'm going to have it go in more against there. So now, you have a piece there like that, and you'll have a piece like this, let's say, and another piece like that. I'll close the gap here between the two rows, because now you got your foundations here like this, and then the, the very top part, not the top row of the top layer, let's say, but you know, the first or the last two or three stacks will be inset a bit. So it'll be like this, right? Like that, so that the weight is all more on the inside. So if this stack ever did fall over, uh, decide to lean for whatever reason you may have raccoons climbing on it or whatever it's going to likely go inward towards this pile and at the back of this firewood shelter there's another wall so it can't go anywhere so I don't know if you can see that good there's a big gap here between the rows and then at the top I think you can see that sure you can you can see the wood the firewood stacks now are going inward they're going this way so that then it brings the weight like this. So instead of being vertical, it's kind of leaning that way now. The weight distribution is going that way against here. And by piling it safely and uniformly, like I just mentioned through the video, this allows me to pile my firewood this this high in here. I can use up all the real estate of this wood shelter. Now when I come up this way further, see how it goes up? I probably won't do that. I could, but I probably won't. I'll probably just keep my firewood piles level from here on. You know, this firewood here, I'm five foot seven, and this is higher than me. I don't want to go too high in case my wife has to come out and get firewood. You know, I want her to be able to reach safely and be able to get the firewood down. One thing I do periodically too while piling the, making my piles, making my rows, is I'll step back and I'll just look at it and make sure I'm not going this way or that way, you know. It's staying somewhat straight. At the end of this video, there will be a link for a playlist where you can watch other videos we have on this channel about building our firewood shed and the size of it and everything. There's videos about how to split wood how to split kindling using a log splitter. It'll all be there in the playlist and it'll be down below in the description of this video. If this video helped you in any way, please hit the like button. Leave me a comment, hit that subscribe button, don't cost you a dime. With that, have a great day and we'll see you on the next video.